Okay, in this video, I will uh, be completing this lab here as part of the uh, Linux Academy, now a Cloud Guru, uh, Ansible Quick Start course. And so if you want to go through the course and do this lab, you'll find it on the Cloud Guru website, which is where all future customers will uh, access. And I'm a legacy customer, that's why I still use the old website for now, because they're migrating us over. Anyway, in this lab, I will be deploying on some test servers in their cloud environment. I will be setting up an Ansible control node as well as a managed node. So let me SSH into these servers here. And this is, looks like, yeah, it's a compute instance running on Amazon AWS. And these servers are running this version of CentOS. That's what I'll be working with. And this temp SSH thing is a bash alias to allow me to SSH without adding the server to my known hosts, because since it's an ephemeral server, I don't want it cluttering up my known hosts configuration file. OK, so I've got the control node here and the workstation here. And let's set it, set up Ansible on this one and allow it to make contact on this one. Let me verify that's what they want me to do. Yeah, set it up on the control host. So first, I'm going to need to install the Apple release package, which will add more pieces of software to the CentOS repos, including Ansible. And you can also install Ansible through pip. And if it's very out of date in your distributions repos, that is the recommended way to do it. Uh, this version here is not terribly out of date. If we look at uh, my Arch Linux host machine, which is also set up as an Ansible control node, it is running version 2.10.7. So um, I could install with pip, and I probably would in production, but this is a test lab, so I'll just keep it installed from the repos to speed things up. Create an Ansible user on the control host and the workstation. So it's tack M, I believe. Yeah, it is tack M to create the home directory when you create the user, which is something that we want to do in this case, so we can have configuration files. So create the Ansible user, and then over here, create the Ansible user. And I'm also going to want to set a password for the Ansible user. And typically what I do, my own environments is I randomly generate a password. Oops. There it is. And since this is ephemeral, I'll just keep that window open until... Okay, I want to check if we're still recording. It says pause up here, just a moment. Okay, the status component of my bar up here wasn't updated, but I was recording, and I still am recording now. Okay, so I have just set a password for the Ansible user. Now I want to push the Ansible user on the control node and generate some SSH keys. Uh, a tells it to go over 100 times uh, this mathematical operation to get some entropy. Let me make sure that I've got this syntax right. Yeah, I want to use this type of key because that's the recommended uh, secure key generation algorithm to use in 2021 and beyond. And I'll just keep the default name of the key and I won't set a password because I want this to be automated. So now I can copy ID from the Ansible user on this machine to the Ansible user on this machine. And the IP of this machine, it's the workstation. The internal IP is this right here. I'll need to know the password of, oh wait, I'll need to know the Ansible password window. There we go. And there it is. Now I can, there we go. I can SSH accurately. So next. I want to set up the Ansible user on the, on the managed node to be able to run sudo without entering a password. So I just edited the sudoers file. I just used the built-in uh, example template with wheel, but I adapted it with the Ansible user, allowing me to, once I switch to the Ansible user, I can run commands with sudo without entering my password. Okay, now the final thing is create an inventory directory, uh, an inventory file, 
and then uh, create a basic playbook to install Git on the managed workstation. So first, sure, make an inventory file. Actually, we don't need to start it with YAML. It'll just be um, workstation. I always need to check inventory. Yeah, you specify the Ansible host variable here. These are notes from the course that I took on a Cloud Guru. So in this case, we need to get the IP of the workstation host. We'll use the internal one. Now that's the inventory. Now let's create the YAML playbook to install Git, which is just git setup.yaml. Then we're going to do it on the workstation host. And how do we indent this again? Okay, I'm just checking an Ansible playbook I've written for my own. Uh, purposes. Ironically, this is a playbook to automate what I'm doing manually in this video, but I'm doing it manually to verify that I know how to do it as the capstone exercise for the course that I just completed. Yeah, so you do tasks and then name and you specify the name there. Yeah. So name is install git with, yeah, with the module name not indented under here, but then the options here are indented. So anyway, um, yum, and then I have some documentation on the Ansible yum module, name and state are what we specify. So in this case, I want git, and then the state needs to be the latest. And that is the playbook all set up. So just to verify, I don't have git installed on the workstation here. But if I run Ansible playbook with the inventory file I just created, and I run the playbook that I just created, it will automatically install git on this workstation which it's doing now, and oh, I often forget this. Um, you install packages as root, meaning that I need to specify the become option in the task, in the task of installing the software, because that needs to be done with sudo, which is why we set up sudo passwordless access earlier in the lab. So now we have successfully run that playbook, and I now have git installed on this managed workstation. So that is a completed lab for how to configure in a cloud environment an Ansible control node and an Ansible managed node and write a basic inventory and a basic playbook to install Git on the managed node.